In this video, I'm going to show you how to refactor some code written by Trevor Appleton. Trevor wrote a tutorial at the URL shown here showing how to use Pygame to create Pong. Before watching this video, you should read his posts so you have a good understanding of how he created the game. What I'm going to do is modify his code to use an object-oriented approach. First, let's take a look at the game. We have two paddles, one ball, and a scoreboard. So we'll create classes for each one of those. Then we'll also create a game class. Now, let's consider what attributes the objects of these different classes have and what they do. First, the paddles. The paddles are just rectangles with a height and a width. They also have a position on the screen. That position is its distance from the top of the window, its Y position, and its distance from the left of the window, its X position. A paddle's Y position can change, so we'll need to give our paddle class a method for that. We'll call that method move. The paddle also needs to appear on the screen. Trevor handled that with the draw paddle function. We'll give the paddle class a draw method for that, so it can essentially draw itself. But wait, the paddles aren't exactly the same. One paddle is controlled by the user, but the other is auto-controlled. So that means the move method might be a little different. Let's plan for that by adding an auto paddle class that extends the paddle class and overrides the move method. That auto paddle will rely on the position of the ball and the speed to decide how it moves. So we'll need to give it ball and speed attributes as well. Let's now consider the ball. It also has a height and width and an XY position on the screen. The ball also has to move and draw itself. So we'll add methods for those. A few other things a ball can do that we want to track. It can bounce either off a wall or off a paddle, so let's have a bounce method. We also want to track when the ball hits the ceiling, floor, or a wall, and when it hits a paddle. We could do this in a number of different ways. We'll do it here by adding hit ceiling, hit floor, hit wall, and hit paddle methods to the ball class. These methods will return booleans, true if there's a hit and false if there's not. There are two more things we need to know about the ball. We need to know when it passes the player paddle or passes the computer paddle. So when it passes the player paddle, that means the score goes back to zero. And when it passes the computer paddle, we get five points. So to keep track of that, we'll have a pass player method and a pass computer method. We'll also need a few additional attributes. Speed to keep track of how fast the ball should move and then two attributes to track the X and Y direction the ball is moving in. Now let's consider the scoreboard. For attributes, it has its X, Y position, its font, and the score itself. For methods, it just needs to display the score, so we'll give it a display method. Okay, so we have the classes for all the objects within the game. Now we'll make a class for the game itself. This class will contain attributes and methods that describe how the game is played and for keeping track of the status of the game. I'll show you this more in the code. For now, I just want to show you the attributes and the methods. Line thickness, speed, score, ball, paddles, and scoreboard are the attributes. And the methods are draw arena and update. Okay, let's take a look at the code. First, the setup. After my imports, I have my black and white constants for my colors. And then I have some global variables. Window width, window height, display surf, the FPS clock, and FPS. These are all variables that create the environment for the game. They're not really part of the game itself. The game is played within that environment. Let's go down and look at the main function. In the main function, we initiate Pi game, we set the caption to Pong, and we set the mouse to be invisible. And then we instantiate the game object. And then in our while loop, we're checking for mouse motion events. When we see a mouse motion event, we call the move method of the user paddle, game.paddles user, and we pass it the position of the mouse. Then after checking for the events, we call game.update to update the game. We then update the Pi game display and we tick the FPS clock. Let's take a look at the game class. The special init method, double underscore init double underscore, runs as soon as the class is instantiated. So when we instantiated the game, we could have passed in a value for line thickness and a value for speed. But since we didn't, 
it will just use the defaults, 10 and 5. We then begin setting attributes. Self.line thickness gets the line thickness that was passed in or the default. Self.speed again gets the speed that was passed in or the default. And self.score gets zero because the game just started. Then below we create the ball. First we get an XY position for the ball based on the window width and height and the line thickness. And then we instantiate the ball and assign it to self.ball as the ball is part of the game. The game also has two paddles, which we'll store in a dictionary, self.paddles. We'll set the paddle height as 50 and the paddle width as the line thickness. And then for the user paddle, we'll set the X position at 20. For the computer paddle, the X position is the window width minus the paddle width minus 20. Okay, and then we create the two paddles. Self.paddles user gets an instantiated paddle. Self.paddles computer gets an instantiated auto paddle. And finally, we instantiate the scoreboard and assign that to self.scoreboard. Let's take a closer look at how we instantiate the ball object. We call the ball class and we pass it ball x and ball y, the x and y position, the line thickness, and the line thickness again. That's the height and width of the ball, and then the speed. So now let's go look at the ball class. We see we have the init method, and in this, we set attributes for the values that are passed in, the x and y, the w and h for width and height, and the speed. We also set attributes for dir x and dir y, the direction of the ball. And then we set a rect attribute. This didn't show up in our little class diagram, but you'll see we have a rect attribute for every element that shows up on the screen. This is how Pygame creates and positions the rectangles, and it's also how we're going to move them. Let's take a look at the init methods for paddle, auto paddle, and scoreboard. Paddle sets its x position and its width and height based on what's passed in. It sets its y position based on the window height and its own height. It then sets its rect based on its x and y and width and height. Auto paddle extends paddle, so it inherits the x and y and width and height and the rect. But it has two more properties, ball and speed. Since the auto paddle runs itself, it needs to know at what speed it should run. It gets that information when the auto paddle is instantiated. It also needs to know where the ball is. So when we instantiate it, we need to pass it the ball as well. And when we initiate the scoreboard, we set its score, its x and y position, and its font. Back in the main function, remember we're looking for mouse motion events. And when we see one, we call the move method of the user paddle and pass it the position of the mouse event. Here's the move method. That position is the xy position stored in a tuple, the second element of which is the y position. So we set the y of the rect to position 1 and then we call self.draw. In the draw method, we have an if else if condition to make sure the paddle doesn't go off the screen. And then we draw the rectangle of the paddle. Alright, back down in the main function. Remember we call game.update every time we go through the while loop. So let's look at game.update. The first thing game.update does is call the move methods of both the ball and the computer paddle. So let's go take a look at those move methods. For the ball, we multiply dir x times the speed, and we add that to the existing x position to get the new x position. We do the same thing for the y position. We multiply dir y times the speed and add that to the existing y position. So remember, dir x and dir y are either negative 1 or 1. Negative 1 if you're going left or up, and 1 if you're going right or down. We then check for collisions. If we hit the ceiling or the floor, we bounce y. And if we hit the wall, we bounce x. The bounce method simply changes the direction of the ball. For the auto paddle, we simply track the movement of the ball, and we try to center the paddle on where it is. Back in the update method, after we've moved the ball on the computer paddle, we check for collisions. This is where we use the hit paddle method of the ball. First we pass it the computer paddle, and if it hits, we bounce x. Then we pass it the user paddle, and if it hits, we also bounce x, and we add 1 to the score. We then check to see if the ball passed the computer, in which case we add 5 to the score, or if it passed the player paddle, in which case we set the score back to 0. Now that we've moved everything to their new positions and we've adjusted the score, 
we can redraw the arena, redraw the ball on the panels, and redisplay the score. And that's it. I do want to show you one more thing. As Trevor pointed out, if you change the speed, it can affect the collisions. That's because we're checking for a very specific position of the ball and paddle to detect a collision. For example, if we change the speed to 4, the ball will go right through the paddle because the left side of the ball is never in the same position as the right side of the paddle. We could make this code more robust, but Pygame has a better way. If we make our paddle and ball class extend the sprite class, then we can use the collide rec method of the sprite to detect a collision. That's much easier and much more robust. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks again to Trevor for letting us use his post as the basis for this video. Check out his blog at the URL shown here for other Python articles.